Hello everybody, um, I want to talk to you about um, a subject that I found really interesting and I only knew about it recently is that um, they now think of tumors from an evolutionary point of view and it actually was a really strong myth buster for me. So get ready for the myth busters in terms of thinking about cancer. Um, I don't know, you probably have a better knowledge of cancer than I do, um, but if you don't, um, then this might help you uh, and perhaps uh, make you interested in the subject like I became recently. Um, in the past, I used to think of cancer um, as just the replica of a single cell that started dividing, 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 and it's just making multiple, 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 just thousands of copies or millions uh, of copies of itself so that that are entirely the same okay um, turns out this is not the case uh, and before I get into the subject I would like to introduce you into three papers from which I uh, found out this material this is one of them uh, called evolutionary theory of cancer um, the other one is a just a second. The other one is a PhD thesis, actually. I didn't read the whole thesis, of course, but I read the parts that I found most interesting. Um, it's by uh, Fratica Mitchell. Um, here it is. It's called Evolutionary Dynamics of Cancer by Fratica Mitchell. Okay, Department of Organismic and Evolutionary Biology. You can check her site out. Um, and the third one is one on tumor cell hierarchy. It's from Nature Reviews, okay? And it's by um, a guy called, just a second, he's called John E. Dick. Okay. Very good. So let's rock and roll. What makes tumors so interesting? Um, how do tumors behave? Now, in the past, I used to think, and I think a lot of people already still think, that a tumor is just a single cell that divided, 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 and all of a sudden, it's becoming really smart, and it, all of a sudden, it, it, it breaks into the basement membrane, and all of a sudden, it goes into the blood vessel and metastasizes, all of a sudden, it does this and that, and and decrease growth factors and so on. It's one hell of a super cell, isn't it? Well, turns out this is not the case. It's actually really strange. It was it was a very strong myth buster to me to find out that cancer is not a single cell dividing. It is derived from a single cell, but it forms this really heterogeneous population, as we'll see in this figure for example where it is yes here it is um, so th this is the initial model that was thought by many many people It's called the stochastic model the, it, it works for certain tumors until today such as uh, melanoma which is more dominant nominated by the stochastic model the stochastic model is just what I said you have a stem cell it divides it forms many many copies of itself but the copies are of course heterogeneous now this is the, the myth buster to me I never knew I, I never thought of it in the sense that as the cancer cells divide they acquire all those weird mutations and each cancer cell is almost like a member of a pop of a society they all ha have something in common which, which is their ability to divide to evade apoptosis etc but each of them by virtue of their random mutations uh, has a special cap capability. So this is the initial model, the stochastic model, in which all the cells are dividing rapidly and continuously and it's not really predictive. The new model is called the hierarchy model, in which the stem cell divides and gives rise to tumor cells of all sorts. This is the stem cell, the, the, purple, st the purple cell, is the only one that is capable to divide. And what will happen is that this heterogeneous population of tumors 
uh, of tumor cells. Only the stem cells have the ability to continue proliferating. All the other cells are rather more differentiated, but they have more random mutations that confer um, an advantage to the entire tumor as a whole. For example, this blue cell might uh, have the capability to evade apoptosis. This uh, yellow cell might have the ability to have a better glycolytic pathway so that it, it survives being away from the blood supply. This uh, grayish cell has the ability to, um, I don't know, secrete a, uh, a certain um, growth factor to help its own proliferation, uh, or I mean to help the, uh, its, uh, its own uh, survival uh, and so on and so forth, okay? So this hier hier hierarchical model uh, of tumors um, is really, really interesting. We think of cancer as a population of cells that are competing with each other. The bad mutations are going to be wiped out, the good mutations are going to be selected for, and uh, interestingly enough, um, think of tumors, think of, for example, in this model from nature reviews i just want to reduce the size so that it's within the screen okay there we go so you get a normal epithelium with all those um back and forth signaling with the underlining and and then after the initiation of the tumor cell of course this is called the multi-stage theory of carcinogenesis in and this is another myth, myth buster for me and it says that it's not a single mutation that causes cancer it's accumulation of many mutations and there is a stage called initiation etc i will explain the multi-stage theory of carcinogenesis hopefully in another video but now i'm just focusing on the evolutionary view of cancer and the so the cells start dividing 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 until some of them are actually out getting further away from the blood supply so those cells are liable to die a hypoxia and indeed some of them do you would sometimes find um, apoptosis occurring you would find a lot of things occurring over there but the interesting thing is because they're dividing really really rapidly they acquire mutations some of them will acquire mutations that will help them uh, be more adapted to the lack of oxygenation for example by upregulating certain glycolytic pathways and whatever and this is selected for the cells that are able to do this are going to dominate the population and are going to be there and by the way this explains the extreme um, resilience the extreme resistance of tumors because it's almost like a, an entire population having a, a whole set of different characteristics, each tumor cell having its own thinking almost, based on the mutations that it had, and uh, is going to have, have an, a, a, a profile of its own. And interestingly enough, like you would expect, the cells near the blood vessels you're going to find very little heterogeneity because the cells that have the ability, so let's say a blood vessel is here, the ones near nearer to it are going to be less heterogeneous because there is just an enormous amount of proliferation and of the cells that have are there are closer to the blood vessels they have more nutrients and they proliferate like hell the ones that are further from the blood supply and of course if this was extended further down are gonna be for example necrotic but you're gonna find a very wide variability because there is little selective pressure for more resistance resistant members of tumor cells and a very interesting implication of this one that I never thought about and I bet um, a lot of the intended viewers of this video didn't uh, think it was possible is that tumors acquire resistance in much the same way that bacteria acquire resistance to um, antibiotic tumors acquire resistance to chemotherapy how natural selection if you get a 
if you give t chemotherapy that will kill all the blue cells and then you stop right there in the in much the same way that we stop an antibiotic abruptly in a bad way then the resistant mutants will stay there they will divide they will form a resistant strain of tumor cells and this explains how cancer acquires resistance to chemotherapy so it's very very interesting to think about cancer from an evolutionary perspective uh, even more interesting is the fact that uh, factors that cause more apoptosis and more death within the normal cells are good for the cancer and you might find this really weird but think of this scenario you have many many cells all right that have already been initiated and i will use um this model which one just a second um I'm trying to find the model yes let's say for example over here you have a normal cell and this i will get back to this in detail in another video hopefully but um just to explain my point right now suppose you have a normal cell and this cell requires a mutation and an and a tumor suppressor gene it becomes so-called initiated it becomes ready to form cancer but it doesn't so when will it form cancer it will only form cancer if there is a stimulus that killed the normal cells so that the macrophage for example or the or any cell in the area secreted a growth factor to the cell and tells it please proliferate to replace the dead cell and once it starts proliferating it will proliferate like mad because there's no tumor suppressor genes it, it's already proliferating and there's nothing to stop it so this is a really interesting view in which in which you've removed uh, in which death of the competitors is advantageous to the cancerous cells which is what you would expect but it's just rather um, not the first thing you would think of another interesting thing is the tumor cells nearer to the blood vessels as in for example right here um, let's say over here there's a blood vessel the tumor cells near to the blood vessel um, they have a good blood supply but what about the ones over there they some of them will acquire mutations that will upregulate for example the vascular endothelial growth factor secretion to cause t uh, angiogenesis to them and um, it's been thought about it's been really weird some scientists have find this really weird because sometimes it is costly to the cell to secrete vascular endothelial growth factor and while it is beneficial to the other cells in the area it's not necessarily the very beneficial at least not immediately to the cell that secretes the vascular endothelial growth factor so why does it do so uh, well uh, as wikipedia states it uh, this requires a so-called game theoretical approach in, uh, in in which there is so-called mutual uh, altruism the this cancer cell does something good in other words the upregulation of vascular endothelial growth factor secretion by one cancer cell it will be embraced by the other cells by nurturing this cell that had the mutation so because they will benefit from the blood supply of course they don't have a mind of this own this is just natural selection taking place but it's 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 good to simplify things okay um i hope this gives you a new insight into tumors and um hope you liked it